video on Freemasonry. We were talking about hand gestures. We were just starting to get into these hand gestures that the Illuminati use or the Freemasons use more specifically. Okay, and these are little secret hand gestures that they do to let everybody know this is where their allegiance is. I'm not kidding. They all do it. Um, you know, and so we were talking about the hook'em horns, the devil horns, El Cranuno, and all of that at the end of our last session. And before I get into this, I would like to show you something. Uh, it was about five years ago that I had run across uh, second hand. I had run across um, this praise and worship book, okay? It's from the 70s, um, but it, it's the piano music, anyway, for praise and worship. Okay, so anyway, it was, I'm going to show it to you real quick. And then I'm going to see if you see what I see. Okay, I'm going to show it to you real quick so that it's covering the camera, just so you can see what it's supposed to be. Okay, up front, it looks like a dove made out of crystal. Okay, it looks like a dove. You see the dove there? Barely, okay, like there's the dove. Nice, huh? Nice dove made out of crystal. And about, well, one day after I had bought it, I had it sitting up on my piano. So I, I, I just threw it up there for the time being. And so anyway, this book is a praise and worship book from the 70s by the Bunsen Company out of Tennessee. They're no longer in existence. Anyway, I was in the kitchen. I came out and I looked at the piano. Even my husband said the same thing. From a distance, it takes on a different look. Do you see what I see? It's almost like from a distance, it's supposed to be the hook'em horns or the El Cranuno. The devil horns, okay? I'm not kidding you. This stuff isn't, this isn't, uh, this isn't coincidence. I don't believe this is coincidence one bit. This is how much we've been doused in it. But see, years ago, like back in the 70s, even the 80s, we didn't know any of this stuff. I mean, seriously, we didn't. It went on right in front of our faces, everywhere. It went on in front of our faces, and we didn't know what we were looking at. We didn't think there was anything going on. At least I didn't, you know, I didn't until I woke up. But there you have it. Isn't that crazy? So anyway, we're going to start talking about some of their gestures, okay, uh, between them. And I don't know, I'm not really sure what this little segment was. I had a lot of stuff put together for this. So anyway, but I do want to bring up a scripture that I think um, is very fitting, okay? First of all, since we're, we're looking at El Cranuno, the devil horns, and that sort of thing, or I love you, okay. And the big thing here is that Freemasons do different types of things amongst themselves to let each other know that they're Freemasons, okay? They're just, it's just little symbols that they flash. They use their eyes when they do it, okay? okay? They're always doing things with their eyes. Bush would do it, okay? And then they do things with their hands. If they're not doing the symbolic handshakes, they're sitting there, you know, going like this, okay? They're doing things with their hands symbolizing. They also do things with their feet, okay? I'm going to show you pictures of all three of these. Actually, two of these. I'm going to show you with the feet, and I'm going to show you with the hands, okay? So now, now that you see what they do there, I want to bring you to a scripture verse. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 6. 
Okay, Proverbs in your Old Testament. Psalms, Proverbs. Go to chapter 6. Oh, I'm past all that. <laughs> all right, I'm going to start with verse 12. A naughty person. Okay, how'd you like to be a naughty person? What's a naughty person? A person that does wrong. Okay, they're up to no good. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with the eyes. He speaketh with his feet. Bill Clinton was notorious for the foot thing. I'm not, I'm not kidding. He teacheth with his fingers. As in finger gestures. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. Why? Because this is all done in secret. He soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Okay? Interesting. Interesting that it would mention the eyes. It would mention the feet. Speaketh with his feet. How do you speak with your feet? When you're moving your feet in a certain pattern, okay, among your fellow Masons. They're speaking with all three things. They wink, they do the hand gestures, and the feet gestures. Okay, so that is what I'm telling you. These people have wickedness in their hearts. And these people use these gestures to speak to one another. Okay, and it goes over the heads of everybody else. But they know what they're communicating. And they know exactly what. Especially the hand signals. Because they each mean something differently. So anyway, now I'm going to continue on with where we left off when we were talking about El Cranuno. Interesting. The first name here is Michael Jackson. Interesting. Michael Jackson. <laughs> Jackson. Prince. Penn and Teller. Also, Christian singer Amy Grant. And televangelist. Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, Rodney Brown, Benny Hinn have all been photographed making the devil horn sign. The Council on Foreign Relations logo is a naked man aback a white horse giving the devil horns. Council on Foreign Relations, that's CFR, that's the Illuminati in the United States of which Rick Warren belongs to. How do you think he did the inauguration prayer with that other flaming guy? How do you think that happened? You know, how do you think a person like him has Obama at his house for dinner before he's, he, you know, has him for dinner at his own house before all this happened? Okay? You got to be in the know. You can't. You think they're going to have some real Christian pastor, somebody who's truly a Christian. Do you honestly believe for one minute in this political government run by occult power, do you honestly think they're going to have a real Christian involved in anything they do? Ask yourself that for one minute. I'm including Billy Graham in this, okay? That guy, he totally changed on his stand. He might have started off okay, but he, didn't, he ain't ended up that well. Hopefully he repents before he dies because I'm telling you, you know, he thinks anybody's going to go to heaven. All he have to do is think they need something, you know. There's people on drugs every day that think they need somebody in their lives. It, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to heaven. 
But hey, he's saying that wide is the way to heaven. Okay, and then you got Rick Warren with his purpose-driven gimmicks. He did more damage to the church than anybody can imagine. What they did, they ripped out the pews, they put in chairs, they 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 went ahead, they brought in the entertainers. Now they got the clowns entertaining in the churches now. Now the churches, they're big rock band shows, you know. Actually, I'm going to show you, uh, now I'm doing a separate clip because I am saving this picture totally for that clip. Things have changed in the churches. These churches are not godly anymore. They are totally different, and they aren't teaching anybody anything. And if anybody dare brings up the truth, they will shut them up and get them out just as quickly as they can. This is a system run by the devil. That includes churches. I am not kidding you. And Rick Warren... The purpose-driven gimmicks guy, okay, came in and taught the world, I'm sorry, he taught the church how to be just like the world. Bring the world into your churches. You know, Jesus said be separate. So who do we follow? Do we follow Jesus or do we follow Rick Warren of CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, Illuminati, USA? Next. I'm telling on everybody. I don't care. I have. I, I. I'm telling on them all. I don't care. Could some of these just be coincidence? This is what the writer writes. Again, I'm reading from Bibliotychopolades.net. Okay, they have a lot of really great articles on there for anybody that's interested. Could some of these just be coincidence? Sure, but could all of them be? From the very first degree, the initiate takes blood oaths never to divulge the secrets of Freemasonry under penalty of death. They are sworn to conceal and never reveal. They take an oath to be cut from ear to ear. They are sworn to secrecy. That's the lowest levels, okay? They swear never to betray their brothers or their organization, never to tell police about brotherhood crimes, and never to convict any fellow Mason as guilty if serving as a juror. Get that? They're above the law. Seriously, that's how these cities run, okay? This is how it works. Okay, there are untouchables in every major metropolitan city, even in small cities, okay? They're untouchable. They don't get a ticket. They will never get pulled over. They can drug drive if they want to. Doesn't matter. As long as they're part of the Brotherhood, they will never go to court, okay? Something could happen. They could be indicted for something. All it takes is a phone call. Hey, so-and-so, I need you to do this for me. And that's it. They don't even have to go to court. They just go on with their lives. Somebody else is going to clean up the mess. This happens in Hollywood all the time. Many of these stars, when you hear about it and you're hearing about it on, I don't know if it's on TV, I don't know, but when you hear about these things where certain Hollywood individuals is in trouble with the law and all that, this is just for you, okay? This is so that, you know, this, this is entertainment for you. That's all it is. They don't deal with this stuff. They send somebody else there, okay? It's, it's, it's only to appease you as an audience. You have no idea the crimes that go down within Hollywood and places down there. You have no idea what's going on behind the scenes of the music industry. I'm telling you, the only way that these people go down is if they piss somebody off that's part of the Brotherhood, you know, like Tiger Woods, who suddenly doesn't know how to golf anymore. But we'll get to him when we talk about mind control and military. Okay, so anyway, getting back to this, they are above the law. They do not, they are not adhering to the laws that you are, okay? Heaven forbid you, uh, you know, 
heaven forbid, you know, you park in a bad parking space, okay? Oh, your time's up. You're getting a ticket. You know, heaven forbid you get something hanging from your rear view mirror. You go five miles over the speed limit. These guys don't get in trouble for loss. Heck, they commit murders. Look at Clintons, man. They are the mob. If anybody hasn't figured that out, they are a mob. There are a lot of people getting paid big dollars behind the scenes to pull off their dirty work, okay? They are above the law. They don't go to prison. They can commit any crime they want. They don't go to prison. Obama's never going to go to prison. You know, draining the swamp, that's a pipe dream. Even Trump knows he can't drain the swamp, <laughs> okay? Otherwise, he might end up committing suicide his own self. Okay, next one. Now that I'm on a roll. All right. Quote. This is a quote by Jim Mars in his book, Rule by Secrecy. He says, The initiate into the order's beginning or first degree of the Blue Lodge pledged to binding myself under no less penalty than to have my throat cut across my tongue torn out by the roots and my body buried in the rough sands of the sea at low water mark where the tide ebbs and flows twice in 24 hours. The penalties in the higher degrees get progressively more gruesome. Okay, and that was what Jim Mars wrote in Rule by Secrecy. Gee, it almost sounds like what happened to Hiram Abiff, doesn't it? I think that's the connection that they make. Well, look what happened to Hiram Abib. Look what you're going to get. Look what I'm going to get if I divulge secrets. See, he didn't even divulge secrets and look like it happened to him. You know, if I divulge secrets, gladly I will be sliced from ear to ear and my tongue ripped out. They do these oaths. They mean them. They really do. I mean, come on. Even Bush, he was... He was in, in his deal, he had to lay in a coffin, okay, with a blindfold on and, and go through an initiation there. They go through all this stuff, okay? Um, I, I've heard it said that uh, at one level of Freemasonry, they got to break all Ten Commandments in 24 hours. Uh, one of them's murder, okay? Seriously. Okay. Here's another quote, and this is being written also by Tex Mars. So the rest of what I'm reading here is Tex Mars. Okay. Second degree Masons recite the following heinous oath. Binding, quote, binding myself under no less penalty than that of having my breast torn open, my heart plucked out, and placed on the highest pinnacle of the temple there to be devoured by the vultures of the air should I ever knowingly violate the fellow craft obligation. Here's the third degree oath. It proclaims, binding myself under no less penalty than that of having my body severed in two, my bowels taken from thence and burned to ashes, the ashes scattered before the four winds of heaven that no more remembrance might be had of so vile and wicked a wretch as I would be should I ever knowingly violate this, my master mason's obligation. Yeah, that's third degree. This is low-level degrees here. This is Blue Lodge. Pretty bad, huh? You want to see fourth degree? That's not all. <laughs> In the fourth degree, Mark Master of the York Rite, the candidate performs a ritual which symbolizes having his ear smitten off if he reveals the order's secrets. And for the fifth degree, Past Master, the hapless candidate agrees as follows. Binding myself under no less penalty than, in addition to all my former penalties, to have my tongue split from tip to root, that I might thereafter be unable to pronounce the word. That's written by Tex Mars, Codex Magica, uh, the book Codex Magica. 
What kind of secrets are they keeping that initiates need gruesome reminders every degree never to divulge what they know? Not only do Masons take the preceding oaths never to expose or incarcerate the Brotherhood Brothers, but all Masons, including presidents, prime ministers, and other politicians, also swear to obey all orders given by higher degree Mason. Quote, the capitalized words when taken together read, I do promise that I will obey all summonses given to me from the hand of a brother master Mason. That means that the President of the United States had to take orders from Albert Pike should he order him to do so. The significance of that startling proposition will become more evident as additional evidence of just what Mr. Pike, you know, the one who wrote Morals and Dogma, right here. <laughs> Believed that will become more evident as additional evidence of just what Mr. Pike believed in is presented in further chapters of this study. There is a hierarchy in the United States and presidents who are Masons take orders from other Masons. That was written by Rolf Epperson who had a book, The New World Order. Albert Pike was a sovereign grand commander of the Supreme Council of the 33rd degree and Supreme Pontiff of Universal Freemasonry. He created the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite, co-created the KKK, and remains a revered figure in global masonry, not just here in the good old USA. In 1891, when Pike died, his funeral was held in the Washington, D.C. Freemasonic Temple at midnight with the room draped entirely in black. And in that room is where you will also see a King James Bible on a pedestal. Also in that room is where Billy Graham has spent quite a bit of time in there. I don't think a real Christian would even be allowed in there. Okay? This is a man who wore a wristband through which he claimed to maintain constant communication with Lucifer. On August 15, 1871, Albert Pike wrote a letter to Giuseppe Mazzini outlining three world wars that would be necessary to bring about world government. Mm, we've had two. <laughs> There's a third one coming around the corner. The first two happened precisely as Pike had planned decades prior. See, any of these wars you were taught in school, these were done by design. I'm even saying, even the December, was it December 4th? The day of, uh, the day that will live in infamy or whatever, you know, with the bombing of Pearl Harbor and all that stuff. You guys, this whole thing was planned. It was all planned. This was all done. These were already decided. This wasn't just some surprise that happened. I'm sure it was a surprise of the people that died, okay? But this was not a surprise. These things are all planned out, every single one of them. You know why? You got people like Rothschilds that are making money on both sides of the war. They keep these war going so that they keep that cash flowing, okay? That's really, that's really the bottom line. They do these wars to make things happen that they want to take place. Even when it comes to Hitler and Israel, okay? They want these things to happen. Somebody wants them to happen. And it was even said by, um, I think, Henry Kissinger. I think it was Henry Kissinger that said it. He said that uh, when these things happen, they're not by accident. I'm paraphrasing. He said it's because somebody wants them to happen. We plan it that way. Okay? Anyway, now I'm going to read. Okay. The first two happened precisely, like I said, as Pike had planned decades prior, and the third eerily resembles the current world political situation. What's going on now? Of course. 
The First World War must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati, he's quoting this, to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communi communism. The divergences caused by the agentur, or the agents, of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war, or foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. Okay? Surprise, surprise. The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. Uh, we will get into that another day on Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel in Palestine. Whoop, here we go. <laughs> During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would be which would be then restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. Get this? That's in this book, okay? The Third World War. This is what you get to look forward to. These are the plans they have for you, okay? The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agentur of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. This was in the book, okay? This is what they had planned. Do you see it unfolding now? Do you see it? The Muslims, Islam, do you see it now? That's what Obama was in office for. It was to bring them into the country so they could set up for what's about to take place. Oh yeah, we have enemies within our borders, but they were welcomed in. And this wasn't by accident. This was done by design for our country. We have some bad days coming, okay? To coin a phrase, those dog days, those dog days they talked about when we were talking about the G and all of that earlier on in these segments. Oh, we got some days coming that, uh, and I'm telling you, when these days come, it's never going back to the way that it was. I'm going to finish reading. <laughs> the war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim or Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. See, these same owners of Israel own the United States. We're, we're run by Rothschilds, and so is Israel. And the whole planet is divided up among ten people. Okay? It's just we get the Rothschilds. Okay? In fact, I'm not kidding. In Jerusalem, they have a street in Jerusalem called Rothschild Boulevard. I'm not kidding. Oh, they're a very well-known family in Jerusalem. Okay. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in all its horror, this is Albert Pike, his words, will cl show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism origin of savagery brave new world they were called savages just FYI and of the most bloody turmoil this is what they got planned for us 
Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity. That's coming, folks. This guy wrote this in the 1800s. Do you see it playing its way out? Whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass, no direction, or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light, who's that? Lucifer! That's their true light, through the universal manifestation, coming into being, manifestation, of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, here we go, brought finally out in the public view. There's your Antichrist, people. This is Albert Pike's morals of a dog, I mean morals and dogma, okay? This is their plan for you, this book, written in the 1800s, written in the 1800s. Do you see what's going on with the Muslims? The war on Christianity, you see it? The Third World War around the corner. This is where we're at. This is by design. This is not at all any type of coincidence by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, in order to call it coincidence would take more more faith on a person's part in this system than just common sense. I mean, seriously, how do you make this stuff up? This is what they got coming for us. Oh, well, this ain't all. But this in here, that's what they have coming for us. That's what you see they're building up for. Think about the deficits and all that. Think about all these other countries we're making real upset with us. Think about all the money that we owe China that they ain't never getting back. Come on. Even Germany wanted to see what was wanted to see their assets were the world treasury, right? Now we would not show them because they're not there. They've been siphoned out. Okay? Oh, they're in the pockets of elite. Okay, that money went somewhere. But uh, I'm telling you, this is all coming to a head. Okay, last paragraph. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Albert Pike, in a letter to Giuseppe Mazzini, excerpt from William Carr's Pawns in the Game. Okay, that's where that goes. But, in this book, this Morals of a Dog, okay, they tell you the plans. They tell you each degree what their purpose is. There's a lot of stuff in this book <coughs> and what's expected of them. Okay. <laughs> now we're getting into another section. And some of this may sound a little vaguely familiar to you from other videos that I did. Okay. This also comes from bibliotechopolades.net. This is also headed under the Atlantean Conspiracy. And we're not talking about Atlantis here. But this ties in to some of the numerology. And this is where these numbers come in. It may look like I'm taking a side road here, but really I'm not. I'm getting into the numerology. I'm just going to read. In ancient Kundalini Yoga, the Kundalini serpent energy is said to rise from the root chakra. We got all the, into all this. I did a video on the Kundalini. I, I barely scratched the surface. Coiling up and around the spine until illuminating the crown chakra of spiritual enlightenment. 
This may sound like bogus Eastern mysticism until the sacred number 33 shows parallels in the world of Western occult studies. Yes, 33, 33rd degree Mason. 33 is a big number to them, to the Freemasons. The ancient Hebrew Kabbalistic Tree of Life contains 33 permutations of consciousness, 22 paths, 10 known or drawn sephiroth, and an 11th hidden sephiroth left undrawn in most renditions. I'm going to show you a picture real quick, and then I'm going to continue on about this kundalini just so you can get an image of what I'm talking about here. Just as the Kundalini serpent coils up the 33 vertebrae of the spine, the tree of life is often drawn with a serpent coiling up and around, showing the path to take towards Kether the crown chakra. <clears throat> now this is a quote passage. It's from the mystical Kabbalah written by Dion Fortune. Okay? I don't know if Dion is a he or a she. It says the paths represent the successive stages of the unfolding of cosmic realization in human consciousness. In old pictures, a serpent is often depicted as twined around the boughs of the tree. This is the serpent, Nehushten, who holds his tail in his mouth. The Ouroborealis? I, the Ouroborealis? The Ouroboros. That's the, the serpent eating his own tail. That's it. The Ouroboros. The coils of the serpent, when co correctly arranged upon the tree, cross each of the paths in succession and seem to indicate the order in which they should be numbered. With the help of this glyph, then, it is a simple matter to arrange all the tables of symbols in their correct positions upon the tree. Granted that the symbols are given in their correct order in the tables. That was the picture I just showed you. In certain modern books, which rank as authorities upon the subject of the correct order is not given. The writers apparently holding that this should not be revealed to the uninitiated. You're the goyim. You're the sheep. But as this order is given correctly in certain older books, yeah, they're destroying all the older books, by the way. I've noticed that. They're doing away with a lot of older books. Even libraries are getting rid of them, okay? Because when you rewrite history, you can't have proof of the old, can you? Yeah, this stuff's all being done. Uh, they use the excuse, we have internet, you know, we're just updating things. No, they're destroying all the old stuff. But as this order is given correctly in certain older books, and for the matter of that, in the Bible itself, in the Kabbalistic literature, there seems to me no point in deliberately misleading students with spurious information. Okay, well that's nice. Here it is again what they're talking about. A symbol for the limbic system and the kundalini energy, the lizard, represent, also represents the cyclical movement of energy through the universe and the space-time continuum, birth, death, rebirth, and infantum. Okay, and that comes from Aurum Solis. Many people regard Kundalini as a New Age fad. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Kundalini can be considered the oldest known science. In previous ages, people raised Kundalini under the guidance of teachers, 
and in controlled circumstances, preserving what they learned as an esoteric knowledge. But we have entered a period of time in which the esoteric becomes exoteric. That was said by uh, Genevieve Lewis Paulson in Kundalini and the Chakras book. Yeah. People are people are practicing this stuff on their own. Plus, I believe that spiritual activity is really ramped up in this period of time. You're seeing more of it, and that veil to the spirit world is thinning. That's what's going on. Now, on to the next one. Oh, yeah. We're, we're getting back into that number 33 again, because these numbers are big to Illuminati. Okay? See, that's what I'm telling you. That 33, when they get to the 33rd degree, they're supposed to be enlightened, you know, and that's what the crown chakra represents. They've arrived, okay? But we know that there's degrees above 33rd degree. All right, back to bibliotycopolades.net. Again, highly recommend this website for information. I'm not even, this is... This website's loaded, okay? Uh, but you got to be careful because it's not all Christian stuff. So you got you just got to be got to chew the grass, spit out the hay, hay and you kind of use discernment when you get in these websites. Okay, the serpent wound around blah, the serpent wound around the tree that talks with Eve in Genesis. See, it all goes back to the Garden of Eden. You know, everybody knows what happens in the Garden of Eden, but Christians, they're the ones that don't know. You ever wonder why it's been hidden from you? These people know. They know. They just have a twisted view of what they know, okay? Because Lucifer is their God. The serpent wound round round around the tree that talks with Eve in Genesis refer, references this process of spiritual illumination. The ancient the ancient caduceus symbol of Hermes, Mercury, and thought, now used by the Western pharmaceutical industry, also symbolizes this process. Two intertwining snakes which look exactly like our 33 sequence double helix DNA, climb a straight vertical pole, which looks like our 33 vertebrae spine, and end at the circle of light crown chakra, which has sprouted wings. Here's your Candusas right here. These are the same wings pins worn by the military police pilots and given to children on commercial planes. I think, who is it? Is it American Airlines or Southwest? Who is it? Who's got the wings with the, the thing? The origin of the symbology goes back to the ancient Atlantean myth, the story of Atlantis. That's where this originates. Precursor to the Genesis story. Yeah. Because Atlantis was a full-blown city before the creation of Adam with the pre-Adamite races. At the center of Atlas, at the center of Atlas's garden was the great tree of life. Just as in the Garden of Eden. This tree produced unique golden apples of immortality, reserved only for the most purified and holy beings. Atlas's seven daughters were known as the Hesper Hesperides, and their main duty was tending and defending the tree of life. Sound familiar? Like the cherubim guarding the way to the tree of life. <coughs> Assisting them in its protection was a familiar friend coiled around the tree. To assist the Hespera, Hesperides in its protection, a serpent called Ladon entwined about the bow. The Hesperides are sometimes given as seven in number, 
As such, they may correspond to the seven major chakras or metaphysical energy centers that collectively comprise the human personality, the kundalini, all those points going up to the crown chakra. So too, the tree of life symbolizes the spinal column along which the chakras are arranged. This interpretation suggests that kundalini yoga originated in Atlantis, from which it spread around the world. Indeed, the tree of life is a theme frequently encountered in many European and Asian traditions of Atlantis and Lemuria, respectively. That was written by Frank Joseph in the Atlantis Encyclopedia. Thus, it would seem that the secret of 33, the secret held by 33rd degree Freemasons, is one regarding spiritual conscientiousness, or consciousness. One that dates back to ancient Egypt and Atlantis. The Masonic symbol of a pillar holding up the earth no doubt relates to this Atlantean mythos in which Atlas held the world on his shoulders. In the dictionary, one definition of atlas is the anatomical term for the first cervical vertebrae, which supports the head. That's a book that Masons always keep, like on their coffee table, written by Ayn Rand, Atlas Shrug. That's also, I guess, college reading. And uh, that, that's, an, that's another book. I think she married a Rothschild, but I'm not sure. I can't, I can't find anything to support that. I thought I had read something a long time ago. I thought that she was somehow married in. Okay. <coughs> Boy, that woman was an atheist, too. <laughs> you can catch clips of her on... Um, on YouTube. This means the 33rd vertebrae from the bottom as the serpent travels to the very vertebrae which supports our heads and minds is also is actually called atlas. Okay, I read this. So the atlas vertebrae holds up the world, our minds. That's what they're making reference to you when they say holds up the world. That's where you get it, atlas shrug. Um this book right here. Atlas has seven daughters, chakras, who guard the tree of life, sp which is the spinal cord is the tree of life here, and its golden apples of immortality. I think we'll, you know what, I'll get into this. One of the most well-known mystical numbers in the Bible, in the biblical 666 mark of the beast. The beast causeth all to receive a mark, without which they may not buy or sell. Currently, thousands of people in America and Britain have voluntarily embedded Verichip microchips inside their bodies. They've already done it. You know, they're talking about on the news right now, now these corporations are going to pay for the procedure and they're going to start doing it. I got news for you. They've been doing it for a while. This is not new news. Okay? Hasn't been forced on you just yet, but that day is coming. These microchips contain their medical, financial, and other records and are satellite traceable around anywhere in the world. Okay? At this point, being chipped is optional, and we can buy, sell, or uh, we can buy or sell without one. But in the near future, the Brotherhood International Bankers plan to implement their world cashless society. Just a few years ago, people scoffed at such an idea. Now it's commonplace. Thousands are being chipped, and laws are gradually being implemented for mandatory chipping of pets, prisoners, and Alzheimer's patients. Okay? It was also in Obamacare. It was on pages 1001 through 1004. It was about how they were going to implant this chip, this device, they called it. They were going to implant this in everyone. It was in the Obamacare. Okay? 
Microchipping or tattooing is actually the final stage in the beast's plan. Many other steps towards this financial control, gr control grid have already been taken and bear the 666 mark. For example, the scannable barcode found on every corporate product. Here's the picture. It is interesting to note that the Greek word translated mark is karagma. That's what that word is in the Greek, karagma, which comes from the Greek word charax, which means a palisade, like a picket fence. When one realizes that this specific word was used back in the first century, and we see today the use of the computer related barcode, we find the possibilities becoming more than a reality in our day and age. Robert Van Campen wrote that in the book The Sign. Thus, the Greek root meaning of the mark is a palisade, a picket fence, a succession of vertical bars, just like the barcode. Furthermore, the beast number 666 is encoded into each UPC. Here we go. See that? It's in every one. It's at the beginning, the middle, and the end. The interpretation of the universal product code marks is most revealing in that the three numbers, 666, are the key working numbers for every designed universal product code. Every group of universal product code marks has in it three unidentified numbers. All three of these numbers are six, making the use of the number 666 the key to using this identifying marking system. There is no deviation. Every universal product code has three unidentified marks whose number equivalent six is uh, six, encoding it with the barcode number 666, written by Bob Fraley, The Last Days in America. Okay, that's the name of his book. Um, I want you to hear this excerpt real quick from, um, well, first of all, before I get into that, I think I'm going to put that in the next clip. No, actually, I'll do it in this clip. Let's see John MacArthur, okay? I want you to see this video real quick. Okay, he is a pastor. He, uh, oh, there's a lot of things about him. But I want you to see this clip before we close this out because I want you to see how he preaches and what his opinion is. And he's teaching very many people this um, about receiving the mark of the beast. Is in regard to the latter half of the tribulation period when when men will be required to have the mark of the beast in order to buy or sell. My question is, uh, once the person takes the mark, is there any possibility of him coming to Christ? Yes. Uh, I think, you know, in, in the seven-year tribulation coming in the future, we're going to get into this so probably a week from Sunday night, maybe this Sunday night, maybe a week, I'm not sure. But... Um, the tribulation is a seven-year period, right? The rapture of the church, seven-year tribulation, then Christ returns, sets up his kingdom. Now, in that seven-year period, really two things happen. God begins to judge the world in, with a series of holocausts, and at the same time, he begins to redeem his people, Israel. And in the process of this, the Antichrist establishes his rule, and in order to function in the economy of the Antichrist, you have to take the mark of the beast. Uh, the mark being the number of a man, Revelation 13, 666, six is the number of man, right? Seven is the number of perfection, and man always falls short of perfection. Six, 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 six. Always six is never seven. So the number of man. And apparently what's going to happen, you take the mark on your hand or on your forehead. And we've talked a lot about that, you know, that, uh, that that's kind of the computer situation. We're now moving fast toward the time when we're going to have to do everything we do by cards and by numbers and all of that. And uh, uh, those number, the thing about a card that's a problem is you lose it, and they've already devised systems to put the number on your hand and on your forehead, and you go through a scanner, and, you know, that's how you buy and sell. It's automatically deducted from your bank account. Now, the question is, if you're living in the tribulation period, 
and you take this mark, in other words, you identify with the beast's empire, will you still be able to be redeemed? And I think the answer to that is yes. going on in Christianity today? Do you see the deception? Oh, it's everywhere. Uh, this guy isn't some unknown somewhere. <laughs> okay? I'm telling you right now, I mean, this deception is just going on and on and on. And so, anyway, we know that the mark of the beast is 666. We talk, it talks about it in Revelation, that you will not be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. Let me tell you right now, it is not repentable. And when you look at all the plagues and all the things that are poured out on the people in the book of Revelation, which we are going to tackle the book of Revelation, you will see that these things happen to those that take the mark of the beast. Okay? So that is not something you want to take. I think that they are teaching this in the seminaries that it's repentable. I heard the very last pastor of the church we were in do his little uh, series on end times. He did it like on a Wednesday night years ago. And um, we had our reasons for staying. And it, it wasn't because there was anything to learn in this church. But he actually said himself that it was repentable. That's a pretty scary thing, especially since people are relying on their pastors to tell them the truth. He even said it. He said it was repentable, and then he gave the, but he gave the, the Schofield version, and he only gave about 10% of it because he himself has never even read the book of Revelation. I guarantee you he didn't because when asked simple questions like, who's Abaddon? Didn't have an answer. Kept saying, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I hope you learned something here. I'm going to pick this up on the other side, and then we are going to get into the number seven. Okay? Be blessed.